<laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of the Alpaca 2 Niner. For those of you who usually tune in uh, to see my lock videos, this particular video doesn't have anything to do with locks, although there is a lock somewhere in it. It's actually about a sewing machine, so this is your opportunity to ditch and be like, nope, not my thing. If you are, in fact, interested in sewing machines, stick around. Anyways, we're going to say hi to the puppers. Winston, hey buddy. You look sad. <laughs> it's because there's nobody to bark at. And there's Gizmo. Hi, Giz. See, he's always happy. Hey, a good pupper. Yeah, good puppers. Yes, Gizmo's a good pupper. And Winston's a good pupper, too. Yes, Winston's a good pupper, too. Anyways... Yeah, so also too, I know a lot of you uh, tune in from places that are probably a lot nicer than this. It doesn't really show up in the camera, but it's uh, snowing outside. Not super heavy, but uh, just enough to be annoying. Right, anyways, so <clears throat> moving on to the, uh, the, the matter at hand, what I'd like to show you today is uh, an iconic sewing machine. Uh, I don't know about other places in the world, but certainly uh, a very popular and well-known machine here in North America. This is the Singer 221 Featherweight. Um, like I said, a uh, very popular machine. Uh, as you probably well know, these older uh, sewing machines, uh, this one, for example, built in 1942 as per the uh, serial number on the bottom of it. Uh, these machines are, are, you know, they have really heavy iron castings. They're uh, quite heavy. Uh, the full-size machines can easily weigh 10 pounds and up. Um, this particular, you got going to have to bear with me. I got a slight case of the sniffles. I'm reasonably certain it's not the COVID, uh, cause like COVID hits like a ton of bricks. Anyways, I got the sniffles. You're just going to have to bear with me being a tiny bit sniffly. And while I'm thinking about it, uh, let's go over and, uh oh, where's the Kleenex? Oh no, we got a Kleenex crisis. Screw it, I'll use some paper towel because the, uh, you know, the table is just all full of kinds of stuff right now. We got projects on the go. All right, that's much better. Right, so what's really interesting about this particular machine, and we'll get, like, there is some damage to the finish. This machine's definitely been used, um, and uh, when I, well, actually, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, What's interesting about this machine, and we'll kind of scooch over here, is that is like what uh, overall good shape uh, the whole set is in, and that it has all, like these are all of the original accessories complete, including the keys to the case. So it's got a, a cheap uh, little lock in there. Don't be fooled by this bidding. These little bits right here don't actually do anything that I can detect. So, um, and another, okay, getting back to how I could tell that this machine has been well used, uh, not abused, but certainly well used, is when I first went to, uh, you know, I cleaned the machine up, I oiled it, uh, threaded it yada yada and I couldn't get the bought the thread out of the bobbin case I couldn't get the the top thread to grab that so I popped the throat plate off right here and there's a nice big chunk of lint in there eh? you know you get little bits of lint in there and and over the years it builds up and actually becomes a material that's very similar to felt right it gets pressed down and and it's like a solid chunk. So anyways, I pulled that bad boy out of there, cleaned her up a little bit, a little bit of oil, and uh, she works great. I uh, used it, and I ne kind of needed it. That's why I busted it out and, you know, gave her some love. Uh, we have a, a one of the chair covers for the TV den there it was starting to come apart, so I fixed it with this machine. And uh, <clears throat> what a lovely little machine. So like I was saying earlier, uh, these old machines can actually be quite heavy, very heavy, 10 pounds and up. Um, this particular machine, I weighed it and it weighs 5.2 pounds. 
the scale I weighted on does not have a metric setting and I'm not doing conversions right now. So if you don't know what 5.2 pounds is, it's something like a over two kilograms. Yeah, thereabouts, a little over two kilograms, something like that. I'm not doing the conversions right now. I don't feel like doing math. So um, initially when I pulled, uh, got this machine out, this uh, pedal was sticking and this is something that I've run into in the past. I don't really, I'm not nuts about the design of these pedals with this little push button thing. Um, it's, I mean, I'm sure it was a great device at the time, but the lever style pedals are way better. Um, there is of course a mechanism. I actually should have pulled this apart so I could, uh, show it to you guys while I'm talking about it but there's like a, a rod that goes through with a couple of linkages and they're spring loaded and it's basically the really old version of a rheostat switch a linear rheostat so when I first pulled this out this button was uh hella sticking and I could only get two speeds out of it no speed or like psycho super fast speed which is the speed at which you're likely to run your hand into the machine and give yourself a few extra stitches. So I popped the screws off and it actually turns out, okay, there's like a threaded rod that could, like I said, travels uh, through the middle of this machine, you know, and there's a linkage up here that's hooked up to this button. So when you depress the button, it moves the linkage and it, and this rod travels back and forth, right? And then there's all the stuff for the rheostat up in here. Anyways, the threaded rod over time had actually come loose and it was butting up um, against the back of this case and there are a couple other you know parts to the rheostat that were actually catching and that was the reason for the button sticking because there's nothing uh, physically obstructing this button other than the linkage and there's trust me there's absolutely nothing wrong with the linkage anyways tightened her up uh, works like new <clears throat> so there you have it, a 1942 Singer Featherweight with all of the original accessories. Every single last one of them. Um, there's even oil inside this can. In fact, I think it might actually be all of it. Uh, maybe it's been used. I'm not going to find out right now. Um, even the manual is in great shape. Right, and that's not something I see a lot. Usually the manual's kind of bashed up, but no, this thing is just in such beautiful shape. Anyways, I'm gonna shut my face now. I just thought I'd share this with y'all. Uh, this machine doesn't actually belong to me. I think it belongs to Pamela. I don't know, I'm gonna have to, but this machine does not actually belong to me. That being said, I have access to it. And I could pretty much bust it out of the closet and use it whenever, so yay. Yay for old sewing machines. Anyways, all y'all have a, a great day and I promise I will uh, upload a lock video very, very shortly. All right, toodles.